we say together, in the, in the name, name of the Father, and of the Son, and, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Most, Most merciful God, God Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For the Gloria today, we're going to use the hymn number 966, the Peruvian Gloria, Hymn 966. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed, and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him amongst you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definitive plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you, confidently of our ancestor, David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with a oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience cor corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. 
We stand now to sing hymn number 361, Jesus Stand Among Us. Hymn Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit down. You may well have heard this before, but these two readings contain the proof of the resurrection of Jesus. We know that the disciples had been told by the women that the tomb was empty and that they had seen the risen Jesus. Peter and the beloved disciple had verified that the tomb was empty. But the disciples could still not accept that Jesus had been resurrected. Nothing like that had happened ever before. We cannot know what they thought was going on. Perhaps they thought that the women had had a hysterical hallucination. Perhaps they thought that the women had seen a ghost. Perhaps they thought that the women had seen someone who looked like Jesus and to the thought that it was him. They were confused. Whatever they were thinking about the events, they were still frightened of the authorities. They were afraid that, because of their association with Jesus, they might be arrested and punished. They were terrified. They were confused and terrified. And then, in the Acts of the Apostles, we are told that 50 days later, at Pentecost, Peter stood up before a great public crowd and proclaimed his allegiance to Jesus. He told them that he had seen the resurrected Jesus. He told them that he was sure that Jesus had been resurrected by God. He also told those listening that they were responsible for the killing of Jesus. This man who had had power given him by God and who had done amazing acts of healing. Now he was no longer terrified. Peter then used the reasoning and logic that the scribes and teachers normally used. He used it to show that David had prophesied the resurrection in the words at the end of Psalm 16. The psalmist had thanked God that he would not suffer the corruption of the body after death. But as Peter pointed out, they all knew David had died and they all knew where his tomb was. So, as the scribes and teachers argued, it was the offspring of David's lineage, the Messiah, who would not die but be resurrected. 
that Messiah was Jesus. Peter was no longer confused. The disciples were no longer confused and terrified. They were now confident and courageous apostles. What had happened? As they say in television plays, 50 days earlier, as the gospel passage describes it, the solid human person of Jesus came and joined them in that closed room. The disciples were able to experience the amazing reality of him, and they were convinced. But brave, down-to-earth, common-sense Thomas was not there. Someone had to have the courage to go out and buy bread for the meal. He wanted, he needed to be granted the same experience that the other ten disciples had received. After that, the eleven disciples must have had a week of discussing, arguing, explaining, questioning and disagreeing. Thomas's doubt may well have dampened the certainty of the others. It certainly had not removed their fear. They were still be hiding behind that closed door a week later. And a week later, Jesus was again there in the room with them. Again, he wished them peace. The peace that he had promised them on their last evening together. Again, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side, this time speaking especially to Thomas. Last time Jesus had commissioned them to carry out on his mission. This time, in response to Thomas's expression of heartfelt belief, Jesus commends those who will in future believe without needing to experience his actual physical present. Did Jesus breathe on Thomas as he had on the other disciples? I'm sure he must have done. As God breathed life into Adam and into the dry bones of Ezekiel's vision, so Jesus breathed the spiritual energy needed for their mission into the disciples. The disciples had to receive and accept Holy Spirit, ready for its power and authority to be shown at Pentecost. Something changed those eleven confused and terrified men into confident and courageous apostles. Unless you think that the Gospel of John and the Acts of the Apostles are both fiction, then that something was the sight, sound and touch of the resurrected Jesus. What a transformation had been made to that group of fallible people. We have to have faith and hope that the grace of God working in us will transform us fallible Christians in such a way that the proof of Jesus' resurrection is, is shown in and through our lives. Amen. Let us profess our faith together. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In hope and joy, let us pray to the Father. God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, help us to feel your presence this morning in this place of worship and in all of our homes, 
through our fellowship, worship and prayer. Challenge us and inspire us through the leadership of our clergy, Canon Janet, Father John and Janice, our reader. May you continue to be a guiding light for us all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As a community in Northfield, give us all the confidence to challenge injustice and nurture the flame of your spirit so that it burns brightly with the people we live alongside every day. May we always strive to warm the hearts of our friends and neighbours in all that we say and do. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our world and all that we have to be grateful for. Help us to remember that not everyone has the basic things in life which we take for granted. We think of those who are homeless and for the many refugees seeking a safe place for themselves and their families. We hope and pray for a world where everyone has a place to call home and everyone is accepted regardless of their culture or background. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we think of those we know who are overshadowed by pain and illness. In their darkest moments, may you be a beacon of light to them in their suffering. When they doubt your presence, may our prayers and thoughts remind them that you are always at their side. We give thanks for the people we know who are recovering and have felt your love and healing surrounding them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the stillness of this morning, we remember the family and friends and members of our church community who we have loved but are no longer with us. Help us to remember happy times and memories and not the pain and sadness that they may have endured. We pray for everyone recently bereaved and ask that you will surround them with your love so that they can see an end to their sadness, emptiness and loneliness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we feel the presence of your spirit in our lives each day, in times of sadness and happiness. Holy Spirit, fill us with your love to help us face whatever challenges lie ahead this coming week. Rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our and Father, Father art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now we've got a couple of exciting things uh, before we have the peace. The first is we need to license or commission a few more of our lay communion administrants. So we did quite a lot last week, um, but um, the few people weren't here and I did fail to read one name out, Mia Culpa. So will the for people, following people, please stand. Tim Westwood, Rachel Westwood, Sandra Reynolds, and Roy Dutton. Sarah, sorry, we, you were commissioned last week. You were here, weren't you? Yeah, sorry. Okay, so hopefully you can see what you have to do. Um, and everybody else, we just reply, it is. Oh, I've just seen Roy going that way. I've forgotten <laughs> to get out the bands book. No, I've got the bands book. I've got the bands book, yeah. <laughs> Dear friends in Christ, our brothers and sisters have been chosen from among us and authorised to be ministers of Holy Communion. Is it your will that they now be commissioned to exercise this ministry? It is. Is it your will that they now be commissioned to exercise this ministry? It is. Fabulous. Candidates, as ministers of Holy Communion, you are called to be worthy examples of Christian living. 
you must strive to grow in holiness through this sacrament of unity and love. Remember that though many, we are one body because we share the one bread and one cup. As ministers of Holy Communion, be therefore especially observant of the Lord's command to love your neighbour. For when he gave his body as food to his disciples, he said to them, This is my commandment, that you should love one another as I have loved you. Are you willing to undertake the office of giving Holy Communion to your brothers and sisters? and so serve to build up the body of Christ, which is the church. Are you resolved to administer Holy Communion with the utmost care and reverence? Dear friends in Christ, let us pray with confidence for our brothers and sisters. Merciful Father, creator and guide of your family, bless these our brothers and sisters that they may faithfully give the bread of life and the cup of salvation to your people. Strengthened by this sacrament, may they come at last to your table in heaven. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Do be seated. Thank you very much. <laughs> Now, it does say they've just promised to administer Holy Communion with utmost care and reverence. This is actually a two-way process. So those of us who are receiving, particularly if we are taller than the person who is offering us the wine, we must take the chalice from them. Don't try and bend down to their level. Let them offer it up to you and then you can control the amount of wine you take. And it's just a little bit, please. <laughs> it's all of you drink, not drink all of it has happened to me once. And we are now receiving the common cup. If you don't want to do that, just receive the bread and then return to your seats. Now, I need somebody to come out of her seat now. And this is Ruth Clark, who is our eco warrior. Come on, Ruth. Come on, Ruth, because Ruth and I have done a good piece of work this week. And it's collected together all the work we've been doing over the last few years <laughs> in the eco church process. Come on, come on, come on. You're coming. Come on. <laughs> Sorry, it's quite a long way when you're at the back. So what have we got here? Silver. Oh, we've got our silver award for the Eco Church. It's been a lot of work, hasn't it? It has. Yeah. It has. It's need. We've had new lights, new heating. We've twin toilets. We've counted the water. I've had an extra water butt at the rectory, and. So on and so forth. So we have now got our silver award, which is brilliant because it was one of our targets for the last few years as well. It's come just in time for the APCM. And I have printed it on the back of another piece of paper because that was another thing we ticked about saving paper. So on the back of this is my safe recruitment safeguarding course for 2014. Okay. So there we go. That can go up in the porch. So if you'd like to do that after the service, please do. Lovely. Thank you. So this following Jesus, this Jesus making a difference in our lives, which Janice has spoken, the proof of the risen Jesus affects us in all sorts of ways. Following Jesus in caring for the creation, caring for refugees, as Debbie prayed for, caring for everybody and worshipping God too. And hopefully this will bring us peace as it did the disciples. So let's stand and share the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the risen Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. 
and we're waving and we're seeing who's on Zoom as well. Have we got any? Yes, we have. We've got Chris and Pat and Rita and Jean and Hilda Parry. And that's lovely. And we are in church, 55 adults and four children. So that's great. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your loving care, you spread before us the table of life and give us a cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of our Saviour and our Shepherd, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. We're on page nine. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and went and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you send the holy spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we and the company of Lawrence and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. We turn now to page 15 in the booklet. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit 
to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Some bands of marriage to publish. And these are between Connell John Freeman and J. Lauren Curtis, both of the parish of St. Bart's. St. Bartholomew Allen's Cross, I better say it properly, it's legal this. Between Christ Gary Christopher Thompson and Donna Wallace, also known as Donna Thompson and Donna Powell, both of this parish. Between David Morgan and Helen Elizabeth Buckler, both of the parish of St. Bartholomew's. And Nicholas Adam Gray and Jessica Amanda Davis, both of this parish. These are all for the third time of asking if any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now, please. Let's pray. Loving Lord, we thank you that you have brought these couples together in love. Sustain them by your love so their wedding day may be a glorious day and the beginning of a long, happy and healthy marriage. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Notices. Aha. There we go. Have it on the right page. All well, this reusing paper can be confusing. PCC net members, we could do with a really quick meeting in the choir stalls after the service. So maybe I won't go out. Um, I'll stay here. And Janice will, because she's on the PCC. So if at the dismissal, we could move that way and all the other lovely people move out for coffee, that would be great. Thank you to the Holy Dusters for their work on Tuesday. Good to see you working hard. Um, live streaming the coronation service. We've got a few people signed up and actually we're going to run with it. If there's only a few people, we'll do it in the pastoral centre. If there are lots of people, we may have to, we might have to do it in the hall, but um, we will do it, but we'll do it in the pastoral centre. Next Sunday, is there a service at 9.30 here? No, no. Why isn't there a service at 9.30 here? Teresa's licensing. Reverend Teresa is being licensed at Holloway Hall where St. Bartholomew's meet at 10 o'clock. So you've time to come here and go, oh, the church is locked and get up there on the 18 bus. Now we are starting an Exploring Faith um, group this evening on Zoom. Have you picked it up over there yet? Yeah. Yeah, great. We've got a few people joining us on Zoom for exploring faith and leading on to confirmation, possibly, if people want that. So it'll be on Zoom for the next few weeks. And later today, we've got Wild Church. And between then and now, we've got baptisms as well. So we're welcoming into the church um, little Ellie, who was here last week, and um, Penelope, who's come to Sunday school many a time. And she actually asked her parents if she could be baptised. So do pray for them. Who's missed the church cake sales? None of you, okay. Yes, a few people have, yes. Who's missed the cake, church cake sales? Yes, yes. Right, we all know Dorothea and Jacob. They've got contacts in Zimbabwe at an orphanage and a school and a church and their pickup truck has died. She's desperately needing funds to, for it to be mended. So we're having a cake stall on the 30th of April. I don't think, yes, after the service. So if you could make cakes, buy cakes, bring money to um, buy cakes, that would be wonderful. And by cakes, we mean jam and produce and anything else. And then on the 21st of May, we've got our annual meeting during the service. If you are not on the electoral roll, Ruth, who was up here earlier, is our church electoral roll officer. And this is a church electoral roll, nothing to do with local authority elections. And if you haven't got your ID, make sure you get it soon because you need photo ID to vote, passports and driving licenses, but not bus passes. No, bus passes won't do. 
Bus passes, you can use this as a concessionary. But okay, that's most of us. Sorry? There are no elections in Birmingham. Oh, how boring. Oh, I was really looking forward to them. I was going to talk to my candidates. Oh, blow. Okay, forget that. Anyway, we have got church electoral roll forms here. Most of you are on it because we own, you know, we you only need to revise it every six years fully. I can give you two forms. Yep. So if you're not on it, please come on to it. And you need to have been worshipping here for six months regularly. I think I'm nearly there. I think I'm nearly there. Just to say, Richard Barber's funeral is on Friday the 28th of April at 9.30 at Redditch Creme. Steph says anyone's welcome to come. They're not wearing black because he was a colourful character. And also Barbara Finch is in hospital. She had a fall, but she received communion from the chaplain the day before yesterday. Lord, the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.